Welcome back to Farmcraft. This is part two of building this fireplace mantle. So even though I had it designed on SketchUp, I fell into the trap of, oh, well, I know what I'm building. I can go ahead and cut my boards. Well, this board is supposed to be flush right here and up against the wall. Look at that. Three quarters of an inch too short. Look at that. Look at how not straight that wall is. You know, that, that's what happens when you're, especially in an old house. I mean, this is plaster, so there's no reason that it has to be straight. I need to make this board wider, and uh, I'm just going to glue a piece on the back. Uh, that's the beauty, since I'm painting this, no big deal. And then I'm going to scribe it to fit this curve so that the board will go in there, be flush at the front, and fit reasonably well along this back. And uh, you know, I might have a little caulk there, but I'm not gonna put an inch of caulk in that gap. So I glued on this piece. I left it a little bit proud. I'm gonna clean that up with a hand planer and a scraper. And remember, this is all gonna be painted. I've got it clamped in position. What I've done is made sure that it's sticking out exactly the same amount all the way down. And it doesn't matter what the number is, it just needs to be the same. So the front face will end up flush when you do it. So think of it this way. You want the board to then shift that way exactly this dimension, which in my case comes out to be 5 eighths of an inch. So that's how much I need to take off of the entire section right here. Not five eighths of the board, but five eighths from the wall. I need to make a line all the way down. That's exactly five eighths of an inch from that wall. Then cut that off. The board will shift that way five eighths of an inch and should fit perfectly. So how do we do that? Well, pretty simple, we use a compass. I'm going to make a mark right at 5 eighths. Then I set my compass so that it's exactly on that mark. So now all I have to do is very carefully just go up and down the board and that compass is going to go in and out with the wall and make the opposing mark 5 eighths of an inch from the wall all the way down the board. So take that to the bandsaw, cut it off. This joint here between this and this, I don't want to separate over time as the wood moves. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there. So I'm using trim screws. These are a very uh, small headed screw and a very small driver. It's basically just a tiny little Torx driver. They're convenient because you use them just like you would a finish nail except they're you know, a little more uh, controllable and positive attachment. So I'll just fill, you know, you countersink them as you drive them. I'll just fill that with uh, window glazing prior to painting. So yeah, now I just have to do the other side and then cap both columns and then put on the front facing. Uh, rather than make the same mistake again, uh, I've measured I need a little extra length on it and the wall is actually angled. It's actually going kind of like that. It's coming away as I go out. 
So I'm going to leave it long and then scribe it in. So basically it's an L-shaped piece of wood right here that's going to cap off the top of the columns. And this is going to be the mantle face here. Um, I've got a bad side and a good side. When I'm planing, I'll make sure I get this side good. All right, I've got my line scribed, and now I can show you if this was actually a two inch board, it would be flush on there, but I've got this gap, and uh, it actually measures an inch. So I'm gonna make, uh, just get a piece of scrap that I can screw on there so that I can then screw this to that. So I need one there, and I need one there. This is now a big, chunky piece that I can't exactly uh, use on the bandsaw. So I am going to cut that off with a jigsaw and make these scraps and I'll be right back. So now you can see that gap that I was talking about. I need to glue a board on there because this was supposed to be two inches thick. And if it was two inches thick, it would be flush with the back. The other thing I'm gonna do is put a spacer right here in the center so that I've got a couple places I can screw the center. You can see no gap. That's what you get working with an old house. You can see down there it's touching, but up here it is off the wall. That's more than half an inch. And the other side It's not quite touching. Dimension there is the same on both ends. So now I'm going to set my calipers to this dimension, the Y this dimension, and then I'm going to scribe down that wall. So I'm going to take that out to the bandsaw and we'll cut it off. So now I need to make this trim here. This is just a piece of inch and a half quarter round. That's no problem. I've got an inch and a half uh, round over bit that I can use. These are interesting. Now these were of course all originally handmade and 
Hats off to the guys who did this. But this is an inch and a half in that direction. But in this direction, it's only like maybe three quarters of an inch to this point. And then it actually rolls back a little bit before it hits this. See, there's a there's like a, a smaller round over right at the top there. So that is an interesting, uh, interesting profile that I'm gonna have to try to make. And of course I don't have that bit. That was probably originally done with a hand plane that was custom made for doing this. All right, so the distance from here to there on this one is about an inch. And this is three quarters. So there's a quarter inch difference right there. Mine up here, no big deal. We'll just do the inch and a half. You can see I've got at least an inch and three quarters. So it'll be back a quarter inch and it'll look just fine. Here, you know, there's plenty. Now down here, these are sticking out about an inch and a half. So if I do an inch and a half on it, it's gonna look funny because it's gonna be coming straight into the round over and that won't look good. I need this dimension to be about an inch and a quarter, maybe even a little bit less. And then this dimension, I can maintain the inch and a half. So how are we gonna do that when all I have is an inch and a half round over bit? All right, so I just took a piece of paper and I cut out an inch and a half radius. It's interesting to me. That looks, you know, not that big. It looks like a small piece of molding. Well, here's a piece of it I did off camera. And once it's a board, it does not look small at all. And I'll show it to you how it's gonna look on that. How it's gonna look on the sides. See, that looks good because it has that quarter inch. Now down here, that does not look good. All right, so think of this. This is basically what my cutting knife looks like. And you're gonna be running a board. So if you take an inch and a half board and you run it past that, it is gonna take off all of that area sticking out beyond this blade and you will end up with this. That part's pretty easy. So how do I make a smaller one? Well, if I just take a board rather than inch and a half square, I do a rectangle. This is inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. And I run it, it will make that. And I actually traced out the curve that it's gonna make. And then just like the other one, I may add an additional round over on that corner. That's going to give me now I did this piece of paper as inch and a quarter. I think I'm actually gonna do inch and an eighth. I want it a little more of an overhang here. So uh, let's go make some quarter rounds. This one's still an inch and a half tall, but it's an inch and an eighth wide. And you can see I've got my inch and a half, inch and an eighth. That looks pretty good. There's a little point there, but I'm gonna sand it, and I'll smooth all that out as I sand it. So we're getting ready to make some molding, and I've just gone through and picked out some boards that don't have a whole lot of knots in them. Now I'm gonna plane these down and get them ready because we're gonna be using the planer to make the molding. So I'm not gonna have a planer while I'm doing it. So I gotta get these planed first. So this is my planer, it's also a molder. I'm gonna change out the planer head for a molding head and uh, we're gonna make some molding that I'm gonna use for the mantle and some other things around the house. If you guys are interested, I'll do a, a dedicated video just to review this machine. I've had this, this planer molder now for a long time and uh, certainly very familiar with its use. Yeah, comment below if you guys think you'd like to see that. Here's the custom molding knife for my casing. 
Um, this was custom made to match the molding that's in my 1850 farmhouse. Uh, to sharpen it, I just uh, use a very fine grit sandpaper and then stones to polish the back. And here's a piece of the molding. And there you can see how the knife fits. Fits just perfectly, of course, because the knife cut this molding. All right, here's the cool part. So this is a two inch by one inch board and I'm gonna run it through. And in one pass, this board is gonna turn into this. Variable speed of this planer is so important because you have to run it slowly, obviously. You've only got one knife doing the cutting and uh, well, let's make some molding. This is the knife for my baseboard. It's a slightly larger knife than the casing. Molding's a little bit bigger, uh, but same deal. Custom made to fit the profile that was in my house. You see there how it cuts that profile. So sometimes in woodworking you'll get into a position where there's really no right way to do it. So right here I've got, I'm just going to show you in a little mock-up, I've got baseboard which is going to look like this, but I've also got casework going to look like this. So how do I tie those two together? That doesn't look right. There's a lot of options here. Yes, it is possible that I could scribe this to that and push it over and then scribe this to that and push it over and get it tight up here and then scribe this top board around it. I don't think it would look right. So another option, and I don't know what this piece of wood would be called, but it would be to take a block of wood, put it in that corner, and, and do that. But because this is so wide, it requires that board be very wide. Then I've got this big kind of corner sticking out here. Uh, it looks kind of funny to me. So what I decided to do after consulting with a few people, getting their opinions, is to cut that corner off, have it look like that. Any one of these ways would work. You could probably come up with some other ways to do it. It's just one of those things where you have to decide what you're comfortable with, decide what you think looks good, and go with it. I don't know, maybe there's a master trim carpenter out there that has a 
an opinion and can say that there is a traditional correct way to do this. I don't know what it is. This is what I'm going to do. So here's a little trick. I always find you just can't get these perfect. I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's a tiny little gap right there. And you know, I could caulk that, but there's a much easier way to do it. You just burnish the edge with a round piece of metal like this screwdriver. Just come up with a little bit of an angle, increase the angle, go the other way. And then at the bottom you have to use the flat. Closes it right up. Makes it look like you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.